Grace and mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from Jesus who will return to judge the quick, the living that is, and the dead. Amen. Dear Christian friends, it sounds like Jesus is talking about money. We've got things being put on deposit with bankers or far better yet, invested and put to work in the kingdom. The parable that Jesus told of the minas took place close to the end of his ministry. Jesus is heading toward Jerusalem. The disciples and the crowds following him are all excited. Finally, Jesus is going to set up his throne, set up his kingdom, and from now on, Happy days are here again. In fact, our text begins that many were expecting that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. But it was not as the followers thought. Jesus would enter Jerusalem as a king, riding on a donkey, gentle and riding on the foal of a donkey. But by the end of the week, he would be crucified. By the first day of the next week, he would rise again from the dead. And then 40 days later, Jesus in that far away land would be crowned king. And at a later date yet to be determined, he would return and check up on his servants to see how they had put their minas to work in service of the kingdom. He said, a man of noble birth traveled to a distant country to receive a kingdom for himself and then to return. He called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minas. Conduct business until I return, he said to them. But his subjects hated him and sent the delegation after him saying, we don't want this man to be king over us. When he returned after receiving the kingdom, he summoned the servants to whom he had given the money. He wanted to find out what they had gained by conducting business. The man of noble birth, of course, is Jesus himself, God's own son. He was heading to Jerusalem, but that is not where his coronation would take place. Rather, on the day of his ascension, he would rise to the heavens amid shouts and the sounding of trumpets, and he would take his seat on the throne at the right hand of God the Father Almighty and rule over the earth for the benefit of his church until he would return to judge the living and the dead. Jesus is ruling there today. But he will come back and he will be happy to reward his faithful servants when he returns. And, as you know, it could happen at any time. But on the other hand, it's very striking in this text, just as it is in our other two readings this morning, he will punish those who have been unfaithful with what they've been given. Jesus is describing us in this parable as servants, each given a mina to put to work for the kingdom. A mina was a pretty good size coin. It had about six months wages worth of value to it, but that's not what's important here. What's important is that that mina never ceases to belong to the king. He has servants who work for him, and he says, here, here is one of my minas, and I want you to put my mina to work for the kingdom. Everything we are and have, in other words, belongs to the king. And it's been put in our possession so that we can manage it for him, the king. So what does the minor represent? Well, 
everything. God has given us our life. God is the one who provides for our daily needs. And he is also the one who feeds our souls with his word and sacraments. God expects us to faithfully use those gifts of his for his purposes. He expects us to learn the word and to put it into action in our lives. He expects us to love him and then to be a friend to our neighbor in every bodily need. He expects us to hold on to our faith and then also to share it with others. And he's given us children and grandchildren and cousins and friends and co-workers and fellow members of clubs. He's given us hands and feet to do his work. He's given us income to faithfully put to work for his kingdom. First of all, by supporting our own families, but then also his work, the work of the church and the work of missionaries abroad. And as in this parable, he has promised to return as king and judge and to ask us to give account. What did you do with the mina that I entrusted to you? Those who have been faithful with the minas can expect wonderful gifts of grace far greater than any value we have added to the equation. But God rewards those who are faithful. So how are we to be faithful? How are we to faithfully use God's word and sacraments for ourselves? The most important thing Jesus looks for is faith. Do we believe what God says to us in his word? Do we believe in Jesus as our Savior? That's why God has given us his word, because he wants us to believe it. And that's the main thing that God as judge is looking for in every single human being on earth. In other words, God also will hold unbelievers accountable. God has given every human being a conscience. God has given every human being enough brain to notice that everyone dies and we should be prepared to die. God has given everyone a conscience so that they should realize, I better make sure that I am right with God before I meet him. And God has seen to it that his word is available in every nation on earth and in every normal spoken language so that anyone can search and easily find God's word near them. So God expects everyone to become a believer. And then God has even higher expectations once we become believers. He expects us to faithfully use whatever gifts he's given us for the work of his kingdom. Now he certainly doesn't expect equal results. The one man, he got ten minas out of his mina. Another one got five minas out of his and God was just as happy with each man and called each one a good servant. But to whom much has been given, from him much will also be asked, Jesus says in Luke chapter 12. What he does expect from everyone is faith and faithfulness. He expects us to use what we have and not squander it. And if we do squander it, he will hold us accountable on the last day. And if we are faithful, God will give us gifts that are so outrageously huge in comparison to anything we've done. In fact, we actually bring absolutely nothing to the table. The guys who earned the minus, it was God's money to begin with. And yet look at the rewards. The one is given 10 cities. The other one is put in charge of 
five cities. The reward is out of all proportion to what we've done with the minas he's lent us to use. You see, the honors that God gives in heaven, in addition to eternal life and salvation, even those are called rewards of grace. Nothing of it is earned. It's all given to us. Why is that? Why is it given to us? It's given to us because those rewards have been earned, but they've been earned by Jesus. Remember, God expects 100% faithfulness, and not one of us has lived up to that. If God were to reward us according to what we have done, we would be on the other side of the equation. But God rewards us who believe for what Jesus has done. Jesus was perfectly faithful. Jesus also was punished for all of our low percentages, for all of our shortcomings, for all of our sins. Jesus has paid the price for those and through faith now God judges you by the standard he has set and by the standard Jesus has met in our place. And that is what makes us want to be faithful. It is the least we can do to thank Jesus for getting us off the hook and saving us. And so, how do we faithfully thank him? How do we faithfully use our minas? You want some practical examples? The top of the list is by putting God and his word first in your life. And right after that comes faithfully fulfilling the duties God has given you, providing for your family, showing what it means to to love your God by faithfully serving your employee, by giving it your absolute best at work as a way of saying thank you to God who gave you that job. Third comes using whatever special gifts and talents God has given you to serve others, whether it's mechanical skills, leadership abilities, musical talents, God wants us to use everything in our possession, and that includes financial blessings, to serve other people as a way of showing God our thanks. That's what God considers faithfully working with his minas while he is on the throne in heaven before he comes back to ask for an accounting. But what about those who don't have faith? What about those who are unfaithful? Another one came and said, Master, here is your mina that I laid away in a piece of cloth, for I was afraid of you since you are a demanding man. You take what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. He said to him, You wicked servant, I will judge you with your own words. You knew that I am a demanding man, taking what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Then why did you not put my money in the bank? Then when I returned, I could have collected it with interest. Of all the shameful acts that people commit, the very worst is to have the gospel and despise it. The judgment will certainly fall harder on those who have had so many opportunities to hear and believe the gospel of Jesus like we have here in America. Those who don't make use of those opportunities. And it will fall even harder on those who belong to a church where they can hear the gospel of Jesus and who just stop coming. In the Wisconsin Senate this past month, they've had a program going on called Welcome Home. They're 
trying to find a way to invite the thousands who are members of churches that don't go to church anymore to finally come back through the door again and at least come to church. You do not want to be one of those people on Judgment Day. To have actually had the gospel in your possession and to have despised it, that's the guy who took that coin, put it in a doily, and sat on it on his fat bottom. You do not want to be that person. Jesus says, I tell you that everyone who has, more will be given, but from the one who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. They will lose it all. That includes all of the gifts that God has given us. He wants us to treasure the gospel, but then he also wants us to put it to work. He wants us to take ourselves, our lives, everything about us, and say, God, you're first. It's all about your glory. To God alone be the glory. How can I serve you, God? How can I use everything I am and everything I have and put it to use for the kingdom? It all belongs to you, Lord. It's all on loan from you. That's what God expects. That's what faithfulness is. And through faith in Jesus, God forgives all the times we don't live up to that. But if we lose the gospel, if we lose our faith because of laziness and carelessness and boredom, listen what our Old Testament lesson said to the Jews who did that. This is what the Lord says, if you will not listen to me and follow my law, which I have set before you, and if you do not listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, then I will make the name of this city a curse word for all the nations of the earth. Or as Jesus says even more bluntly at the end of our gospel lesson, now as for those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. And so as not to be left out, Paul says the same thing in our epistle lesson. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his powerful angels, he will exercise vengeance in flaming fire on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Dear friends in Christ, those who first heard Jesus tell this story were expecting him to set up a kingdom of glory at once. But such was not to be the case. Jesus had a long test in mind, and we are in the test. And the test is to trust him for the forgiveness of sins and then to live for him out of thankfulness for the gift of salvation. God wants us to put our minas to work. Lord have mercy. Amen.